I was gonna try and film outside today, but I live in Florida and it's nearly 100 degrees out today. So that's definitely not gonna happen. But I wanna talk about how the Yu-Gi-Oh that we know, or as we used to know it, depending on how long you've played, is just dead. And I think that there's no denying that. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it's your host with the most, Avery LR32 here, and destroy the ever-living Yu-Gi-Oh! Boo Boo Stain is dead. Off of that, like and subscribe button as we climb even higher the 1200 ladder. I know I seem a bit somber in this video, and that's because I was watching uh, Capital G's June banlist discussion video that he posted earlier today. You should go watch it, so definitely a good listen. And he was talking about how people aren't necessarily, well, not everybody, I should say, is necessarily happy with the balance. I thought it was pretty good. But it really got me to thinking. And I realized that, even though I did already kind of know, but it just sort of hit me more than it usually has in the past, that the Yu-Gi-Oh! we know today is obviously so different from the game that we've known in the past. But Yu-Gi-Oh! as we used to know it is dead. What do I mean by this? Well, if you've been playing for as long as I have, over a decade at this point, uh, then you've clearly seen the game change. I mean, I went to my first locals in 2008, two weeks before the Fusion deck got changed to the extra deck. So I've seen the game change in many ways. I mean, I thought the game was super fast when Gladiator Beast, Light Sworn, and Teledad were the decks to play and beat. And then you get to Dragon Ruler format, like what is that, five years later? And the game has just massively warped. I don't think anyone can really argue that you can say definitively that GOAT format April 2005 is the same Yu-Gi-Oh as hell, even 2008 Teledad or 2013 Dragon Ruler format or hell, even 2010 Edison format. Those formats, when you compare them in a vacuum, are so monumentally different than what we even have in 2023. You know, if you told 12-year-old me back in 2008, Avery, come 2023, we're going to have decks that are basically solely based around Fusion. Some will be based around solely Synchro. We'll have Link Monsters, Pendulum Monsters, where you can possibly special summon up to five monsters from your hand. It's going to make Teledad look like a slow grandma that lives in a retirement home. And the deck you're playing now is going to be garbage by that point. Everyone's going to laugh you on out of the locals. And... I would laugh in your face because I'd be like, what are you talking about? Dark Arm Dragon is the most powerful Yu-Gi-Oh card ever. There's nothing like Crush Card Virus. Uh, nothing can possibly top this unless like it gets banned. And sure enough, we saw things like Crush Card get banned, Dark Arm go to one, and a deck like Light Sworn that was tier zero for the longest time in the TCG before the OCG got charged to the Light Brigade. Uh, now Light Sworn is at full power everything's at three like everybody i remember for years said lumina can never come back to three because it can get itself and it's like a zombie master but it's even better if you have three up then you'll mill nine cards and we have that and light sworn isn't doing a damn thing in the game <laughs> and that's not necessarily a bad thing to see that uvo has changed a lot but it is also bad though because of the fact of how people are getting into the game. If maybe you were one of the many people who watched my Master Duel's terrible video when Master Duel first came out, I know that I'm saying Master Duel instead of the other word, but I'm, I'm messing with this video a little bit. I'm seeing if maybe if I curse less, it'll kind of move it up in the algorithm. So I apologize about that. Um, ah, screw it. Master shits. <laughs> I can't contain myself with that. But uh, when I made that video... Clearly, there were like younger kids in the comment section, and then there were also people who like played the game for years that tr that like came back to the game after like being away from it for years that were just shocked by what Master Shits was. You know, I, I had like kids in my comment session saying, I tried to summon a monster, my opponent summoned all these big star, big attack monsters, and they beat me in one turn. And then I said the same thing I was saying to all those other comments, welcome to modern Yu-Gi-Oh! Because even though I don't specifically know what that person's talking about, whether they're trolling my comment section or just not knowing how to explain what's going on in the game, that is modern Yu-Gi-Oh! Summoning big star monsters and big attack monsters and beating you in one turn for game. 
Yu-Gi-Oh! is a break my board game. It has been, I would argue, since like 2013 Dragon Ruler format to a more or lesser extent as the years have gone by since then. You know, then you have the people that maybe didn't play the game for years and are like, what's Link summoning? What's Pendulum summoning? I got out of the format when Exceeds were a thing. I got out of Yu-Gi-Oh! when Synchros were a thing. So it, there's not even really a good entry point for those people because there's so much to get caught up on. You know, someone like... Uh, Valley D, uh, one of my good friends that I've known from playing Yu-Gi-Oh for years, you know, he stopped playing after Cash Tira came into the format. So he missed out on Photon Hypernova, Maze of Memory. Like he missed out on everything pretty much once Tier Element got killed and on. So he had to catch up with all of that. Could you imagine someone coming back into the game that hasn't played since say like 2008 and they're trying to get caught up over basically 15 years of what the game has evolved into? It, it, your head would explode. And so I get where people are frustrated with the game in that sense. There are people who've been playing the game for years like me and are just frustrated with the game in general. And I see it from both sides. You know, I see it from the older player perspective where, yeah, I wish that we kind of had a slower format like Teledad and Edison format comparatively to now are slower formats. But back then people were saying it's too fast and Yu-Gi-Oh is dying. But I digress. People were always saying the game is dying. Um... You know, I would love to be able to go back to formats like that uh, outside of a Time Wizard format. I'd like to be able to play modern Yu-Gi-Oh! in that slower aspect. I think a lot of people would. The problem is, and I've said this before, I feel that old school Yu-Gi-Oh! really truly died in 2013 when we first got the Dragon Rulers. I don't think people can really deny that, at least to an extent. Because when you look at 2012 with Abyss Rising, when that set came out, if you were playing, then we had like Mermels, we had Windups, we had these OTK decks that were pretty fast, but yet it was a pretty diverse format. Like Mermel was considered the fastest deck in the room. And even then it was kind of more of a control deck. Like I remember for years, I was preaching that the Abyss Sphere trap that Mermel had that was basically like a Call of the Haunted, like needed to go to one or be banned, like it was so good comparatively now you look at it and it's not all that great and then we got dragon rulers and they just blew everything out of the water dark rulers were no longer playable uh, mermel was maybe playable if you had enough tech spice in your deck you couldn't really play wind ups you couldn't play dino rabbit because it just couldn't keep up the only way you could play dino rabbit is if you built your deck specifically designed to beat dragon ruler and even then you were probably just better off playing evil swarm and really the the game came down to you either play dragon rulers or spell books if you weren't playing one of those you were maybe playing evil swarms and hopefully getting lucky and that change Yu-Gi-Oh! I would argue forever because the game got so fast to that point. Drawing eight, nine, ten cards off Super Rejuvenation. Six cents, drawing five or six cards. Vanity's Emptiness being an, an insane $60 common floodgate out of Star Strike Blast and it was like a couple bucks on release because nobody but Bujins played it. Although I think Bujins came later. Yeah, Bujins was like 2014, but still the same thing applies. And so uh, to to say that Yu-Gi-Oh! is still the same game that it was back in 2002, I think is just not true. And even though that version of Yu-Gi-Oh! we'll call it, is dead, I think what we have now is arguably a better game. Because now instead of, and this is what Valley D, he put it perfectly when I was trying to do a podcast episode with him a while back, uh, when I was still a bit of a smaller channel, but my audio was all kinds of screwed up. But basically one of the things he said was, you know, Yu-Gi-Oh! back in the day, you didn't really know if you lost the first game until you were like 15 to 20 minutes into that first duel. You know, games took longer overall. Now in modern Yu-Gi-Oh! you'll know within like, I would say the first five minutes or so, depending on how long both players take to shuffle, how fast each player is playing, whether or not you brick, uh, you'll know within the first five minutes if you've lost that game or not. You know, as soon as you start game one and you build your board and the opponent starts breaking it, at least me, I'm already thinking in my mind, what is it that I want to side deck against, you know, say Cash Tira? How is it that I want to beat this matchup or against Branded, whatever? Uh, then once you go into game two and then, you know, you start playing it out and beating them, then you're thinking, okay, how is that going to side deck for game three? Well, I'm going to go back to being a going first or go into going second because they're going to want to go first. You know, you're not wasting all this time, so to speak, going from turn to turn. Okay, they're going to play this and then I'll go ahead and play this and build up this kind of defense and make them whittle down theirs. 
And that's not to say that the game was bad back then. It was good in its own right then. At the same time, if the game would have stayed the same since 2005 GOAT format, I don't think we would have the popularity of the game like we do now. And that's weird to say because there are people still to this day getting into Yu-Gi-Oh! because of the original Duel Monsters anime and like the Battle City arc and even like GX to an extent and a lesser extent like 5Ds and Zex and all that. You know, like there are these uh, two younger kids that uh, I met a while back and re really cool kids and they enjoyed playing Yu-Gi-Oh! But they weren't playing the game properly and they learned a game, the game, they heard about the game because of the like, I think it was the Battle City arc of the anime. So I had to teach them how to play the game properly. I taught them about the meta decks at the time. This is like 2018. And like they were blown away because they're like, oh, this is so cool. And like trying to teach them about combos and one card combo, two card combos and trying to teach them about how to get better at the game. And so I, I don't know if even to this day, if they're even going to locals anymore, but I know that they still cosplay and go to conventions and stuff. And that's, that's cool. But the original Yu-Gi-Oh series is what got them into that. They go off and play something like Master Duel. Uh, like they're going to get blown out of the water. Like anybody would, if your entry into the game was seeing the original Yu-Gi-Oh. Like I saw the original Yu-Gi-Oh. But at the time that made sense because that was the main show. And that's also... Uh, what sort of speed to a lesser extent the game was at. You know, I remember going to my local Books A Million in like 2007. So at the time, what, Diamond Dew Turbo, aka Airblade Turbo, would have been the best deck at the time. And I remember going against those meta decks at the time and like some more roguish stuff. Uh, and like the speed was very slow compared to now. And even though the Yu-Gi-Oh! anime is much different you know, it made sense for that time frame because you didn't have all these different summons. You didn't have all these different decks in the meta. At the same time, and I'll end it off here, I think that the game is a lot more healthier today than it was back then because you have a lot of different choices. Yeah, sure, everything is basically an archetype now and not just good shit dot deck. But I think that that's also, I guess to a lesser or more extent, good because it's kind of easier to plan on, okay, this is how you beat this archetype and not just, oh, this is good stuff dot deck. Granted, having a good stuff dot deck in the meta makes it difficult to play against because you don't really necessarily know all their choke points. And if you want to play something like that, then you have to kind of combine different archetypes together. Like I did with Sprite Purely. I used Sprite as a sub engine and it was mostly a Purely deck. Guys, let me know what you think about this discussion. Uh, I mean, I still think Yu-Gi-Oh! is very healthy. I mean, the numbers are there. Yu-Gi-Oh! as a franchise is doing great. I mean, it, it's not going away anytime soon. But to say that the old school Yu-Gi-Oh! still exists in the modern game, I, I just don't really think that that's true.